Well, joining me now to talk about antennas, Richard Schneider, the founder of Antennas Direct, one of the world's largest antenna distributors. Richard, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Well, um, cord cutting, what in the world, uh, how, how much are people buying antennas during the pandemic and leading up to now? What are sales like? Do you, can you tell me? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're shipping close to 100,000 units a month. Um, so it's been, it's been really growing for us. Um, like you said, we're one of the largest antenna companies, uh, in, in the world, the largest in North America. And, uh, we're in, in 9,000 retail outlets and the, and the retailers are actually giving more space, uh, to antennas. So not just, not just us, but our competitors are growing as well. It's one of the fastest growing categories and, uh, people uh, are starting to find out that broadcasters actually broadcast. And uh, it's it's kind of surprising in 2021 uh, that we're talking about antennas. You know, you thought that would have been your grandfather's technology, um, but believe it or not, you can get, you know, depending on your market, 50, maybe as much as 100 plus channels, uh, depending on the size of your um, of your television market. And a lot of those channels can be received in high definition. Yeah, it's amazing. And and even I, I know technology has improved with antennas. But frankly, I saved a couple of antennas, just had them in a box from my college years and immediately following. And you plug those things up and you're not going to get that many channels uh, probably where you live. But I can receive high definition out of those little rabbit ear antennas from 1984. Yeah. And actually, we're not implying you have to buy a special antenna. Um, I will say there, like you said, there has been a lot of advancement in the science of antenna design. So new antennas are more reliable. They're smaller, but let's say you have a house that was built in the fifties and they put an antenna in the attic. I tell people, try that, you know, hook that up to your TV. There's a good chance that's going to work fine for you. And if it works and you get all your channels in your local market, uh, you don't necessarily need me. So I always say, you know, if you have a junk drawer, some rabbit ears in, maybe you live within a couple miles from the transmitting tower, you can try, um, you know, a legacy antennas. Um, now, the newer ones, like I said, will will be much smaller, more aesthetic, more reliable and all that. But, you know, I always start with what you already own. But and the and the powered antennas, how much better are those going to be for the average user who may be, you know, let's say 30 miles from does that actually help boost the signal? And, and I'm, I'm just curious about how that that technology works. Yeah, there is a lot of snake oil in our business. Um, there are situations where an amplifier absolutely can help. And I'll, I'll tell you where it can help. If you're splitting the signal, let's say you have five TVs and one antenna, absolutely an, an, an amplifier would be, I would I, I, I almost uh, re really strongly recommend that. If you have a long cable run, an amplifier can overcome the resistance. Let's say you got a hundred foot of, a coax cable between the antenna and the TV set, absolutely. But for an indoor antenna, if the antenna isn't picking up the signal to begin with, um, the amplifier can't magically make it uh, appear. Um, it won't create a signal that doesn't exist in the first place. Now, there are, there are borderline situations where it maybe can elevate a very weak signal above, you know, of, of we call the noise floor of the tuner. But I, I would say a lot of, um, a lot of it is snake oil. We actually had a competitor um, that had a red light on the antenna when you turn the knob and that's all it did. It just turned the red light on. And people are like, oh, that's much better. Oh yeah, yeah, picture looks great. And it was absolute, just a red light. So I, I would be in an indoor situation I, with a short cable run, it may not, not it may not always make a, make a large difference, but a lot of the retail workers think that, you know, amplification, um, will somehow make up for bad placement of an antenna or poorly engineered design. So. Well, that, that is so good to know. And I know a lot of people are, are going to be very interested in the answer to that question because you see them everywhere. Now, I do want to, we, we talked a little bit before we started recording about some of the things, some of the, uh, the antennas that are available online. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Amazon because that's where a lot of people shop. Uh, where you can find antennas that promise. I was just checking one antenna company said you can pick up channels from 300 miles away. 
that is scientifically impossible. Am I right? Well, well, I, I mean, all right, yeah, I, it would be it would be highly unlikely uh, that you would find reception at, a, at at even over a hundred miles, especially an indoor antenna. Yeah. Um, we have customers, the, but these are outliers that put in up ham radio towers. They'll buy four of our outdoor antennas, an amplifier. They'll gang them together, and they'll get a certain meteorological condition, and they can get reception at these extreme, you know, extreme situations. But those are outliers. A normal person should never expect reception reliably more than about 70, 80 miles, and that's with an outdoor antenna. With an indoor antenna. I would say even 30, 40 miles might even be pushing it because the signals are line of sight and we're, we're limited. Digital reception is, 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 is generally line of sight and we're limited by the curvature of the earth. So if you have a two story house on flat ground and your television station you're trying to receive, uh, let's say they have a thousand foot tower, you're probably not gonna get reception much more than, let's say you're using an outdoor antenna, then maybe about 80 or maybe 90 miles an hour as the, crow, as the crow flies. So 300 miles, and I've seen claims of over a thousand miles, that's, that's absolutely fraudulent. There's just no way um, you can expect a reliable reception. And there are, there are, you'll see anecdotes on the web all the time where somebody gets, uh, I, I have a customer in Cleveland who gets reception out of New Orleans, but he's also an amateur meteorologist and he gets something bounce off a inversion layer or there'll be a tropospheric effect. This is highly complex stuff. A normal civilian would never, should never expect that kind of reception. Or getting the Weather Channel and CNN and ESPN as well, uh, right? Are there oh, it drives, it drives me nuts, obviously. You're not going to get paid television with an antenna. Now, there's lots of new great networks are available for free, but it's not going to be HBO. It's not going to be American Movie Channel or, or any of these things. I mean, think of, over the air now is like the new basic cable. And there's some great stuff that PBS is launching and, and some of these other uh, networks are launching multicasts. And they're great, but they're not what you would consider. They're not traditional pay TV. They're ad supported, you know, television. And we've actually... Uh, I have approached the Federal Trade Commission about some of this. Um, ab about a month ago, there was an antenna company that was fined $30 million for some of these outrageous claims. We're like, great. So we called the Federal Trade Commission and we said, all right, great. One down, you got about 500 more to go. Right. And, you know, they're, they're I, I don't want to throw them under the bus, but they said, we, we're really going to go after cases that we think we can win. And that rules out the Chinese sellers on Amazon. And there's bunches of them, but they're kind of hard to get their hands around to, to, to put them out of business, to find them. So the, the, the folks they find were, you know, they were based in New York. They had a, a physical presence in the United States with an American owner. And they were making really clearly outrageous claims, specifically calling out pay TV stations and, and, um, and some of the, and some of the, um, outrageous range claims, but the, the, the FTC, we, we, you know, we got to get, we have to build a case really on our own against some of these guys that are, it's clearly fraudulent and some of the range claims, you know, if there's, if there is even a hint that it's theoretically possible, they may not even prosecute that. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's kind of frustrating because there's so much good with this, with the new uh, digital broadcasting, it really does help people but the snake oil salesmen are really hurting our, our category and it's causing all of us to be looked at suspiciously. You know, and to its credit, when I checked and kind of shopped for antennas on Amazon a couple of years ago, I saw a lot of those antennas with the outrageous claims for the cable channels and the, uh, the range. Today, when I looked, uh, most of the those claims about getting Weather Channel, CNN, ESPN, I didn't see many of those. So maybe that is Amazon cleaning up the marketing. I, I just want to give them a little credit. If that's happened, uh, I didn't see those claims. The range claims are still all over the place, up to 500 miles. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think a $35 million fine got somebody's attention yeah. on that. And that was the the the, the center point a post of the of their case was the 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 impression that you can actually cancel cable 
and replicate all your cable just with an antenna. Yeah. And what we're saying is an antenna is a supplement to maybe a Netflix or Amazon Prime or something like that, but it's not instead of uh, pay TV, it's, it's a, it's a complement to it. And, and these guys were really blatant. Um, the, 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 I have noticed that some of the specific call outs on, on pay TV have been reduced, but the range claims are still wildly, you know, out there. So if you do see anyone claiming, let's just throw out a hundred miles, you know, that, that, that there's some scumbaggery going on in, in that, in that business. And a lot of these antennas, they're, they're from mostly made in China. They're out of a catalog. They're not even necessarily tuned for the core frequencies on, on which the American broadcasters tr transmit. So there's some overlay, uh, overlap, obviously, so they might work. But um, yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the you know, 300 mile range antennas for 1995, yeah. you're probably gonna have a, less, a lower batting average with those. Yeah, uh, when, when people are, and there's still a lot of people, I hear from our viewers quite often, which antenna do you recommend? What questions, what do they need to know before they decide well, maybe even if an antenna is right for them, and if it's an indoor antenna, an outdoor antenna, what should people kind of ask themselves? Okay, what is, what is your distance from the, number one, what is the distance from the transmitting tower? Um, and there's, we have an app and there's other services out there. We have an app called Antenna Point. It's a, just a, it's a, it's a web app or a iOS and Android app. It'll, it'll just take your location and it'll quickly tell you how far you are and it'll, it'll give you the aiming vectors. Okay, so if you're more than say 40 or 50 miles from the transmitting towers, I won't even entertain the idea of an indoor antenna. So you really would, would be best off. Outdoor antennas just in general are going to be more yeah. reliable. You're gonna be more successful. If you're worried about a homeowner's association, two things, you, are, you have the right to put on an antenna on property you own and control, as long as it's not more than 12 feet above the roof line. Or you could just put it in the attic. But I, I, elevation is your friend. So the higher you get the antenna, the, the more successful and more reliable it's going to be. Uh, if you're less than, say, 30 miles from the transmitting towers, you can use an indoor antenna. Um, try to get it near a window. And again, use the Antenna Point app and get it on a window that's on the side of the house that's facing the transmitting towers. And windows, glass is more transmissive of the digital signal. So if you can get it in a windowsill or a lot of these flat antennas can stick mm -hmm. um, to glass. I mean, that's gonna be better. Older houses have a lot of trouble with metal lath in the walls that can block the signal. Um, people who live in Southern climates can have problems with solar shield insulation. So I like glass, it's just, uh, it, 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 it's better. Um, you wanna keep it away from metal because that can couple with the antenna. Um, and other than that, it's, I, I don't want to make it sound like it's harder than it really is, right. uh, but people who are rural, really rural, um, and maybe more than 80 or hundred miles from the transmitting towers. Um, those are some of the people we might have a hard time servicing. Um, you know, unless, unless they'd be willing to put up maybe a tall mast on the peak of their roof. Mm -hmm. All right. And so we can find that information on your website. Yeah. And, and just antennapoint.com or and the Antenna Point app. It's all free. It, you don't have to be a science major to use it. It's just a two second app and you can, you can just see really quickly, you know, the radius is from you to the transmitting towers. And I will say the app, I think by default, doesn't even show anything more than 70 miles, you know, just because, you know, you may not be yeah. successful. Yeah, not guaranteed. Uh, yeah. I, I do want to talk a, a little bit about if we've got, if you had the time, talk about ATSC 3.0. Oh, yeah. That that's going to be cool. That's going to open up so much more. And uh, explain that to our viewers who are, you know, they may have heard about it, maybe they haven't, but what that's going to mean to the average TV viewer. Yeah, that's going to be a game changer. So it's going to be branded as next gen. That's what you'll start seeing on, on television boxes. Sony and Samsung and LG are all launching new TVs this year with next-gen or ATSC 3.0 tuners. And what it is, it's a more efficient broadcast standard. So we already went through in 2009, the digital transition. That's ATSC 1.0. Um, now we just sort of leapfrogged into version 3.0, and it's IP-based. So it's like... Uh, 
it's like data casting, but over the air. So it'll be IP based, um, and you're going to be able to um, actually um, have more channels. It's more efficient. They can fit more bits and bytes down the pipe, and it will also have the ability to have 4K broadcasts. Um, they're doing some tests right now as we speak, and there'll be some Olympic broadcasts actually uh, in certain markets, not everyone, but there'll be certain markets. And if you have the right TV, you'd be able to watch some events in 4K. The, but what's really interesting is they can broadcast individually you can to individual televisions. And this is, this is very exciting to the broadcasters. So let's say, you know, you like, uh, you know, sports and pickup trucks and things like that. You might see a different kind of ad for pickup trucks than I would see. And say, I don't want to sound sexist, but my wife might see ads for cosmetics or something like that. And they can, they can, um, you're going to have to give up a little personal information. Um, but in exchange, you're going to, you're going to get uh, programming and uh, advertising that is going to be specific to your interests and your geography. So maybe the local cupcake shop will broadcast, but just to a two mile radius yeah. to people mm -hmm. in there. And so it'll open up broadcast uh, advertising to much smaller businesses. And then there's really exciting is the ability to get some pay, uh, maybe some pay per view. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no my worries, no worries. My daughter's cat. She's so, cat. yeah, Dr. Evil's cat, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bigglesworth loves the idea, though, of ATSC three. Maybe and, that's what uh, she's doing. Yeah, she wants to hear yeah. more about. Yeah. About next gen. <laughs> no, it's 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 kind of cool because there is going to be this hybrid where you could offload a lot of the bandwidth off of the internet onto the broadcasters. Yeah. And so you could stream potentially very high end. Uh, the people we're making fun of earlier, you could literally stream high end uh, pay per view type movies or, or premium movies. There might be a subscription model or a pay per view model, but it is basically the internet, but broadcast over the air. And it's very spectral efficient. So they can fit a lot more bits and bytes in there. There's, there's other, it has other features um, that Congress is actually excited about and Weatherman is that let's say a tornado is coming through your house. The weatherman in your, in your market actually has a red button and he can turn your television on remotely. Oh so three in the morning, your TV could come on and it'll say, hey, get out of here, get in your basement. You know, tornadoes come in and only turn on the TVs in that path of the tornado. Wow. So instead of watching a, a tornado warning for something in the outlier part of the broadcast uh, footprint, you only see the warnings specifically for your ne your neck of the woods, your neighborhood. And that's really going to could save a lot of lives because again, they can broadcast just to specific neighborhoods or you know, even spe just to specific TVs. <laughs> like, hey, Jamie, get out of bed. <laughs> we, the tornado's coming, get up. <laughs> so is there something, if, if people are in the market for a television, an antenna, do they need to consider future-proofing their purchase? Or are the televisions and most of the TVs, the 4K TVs, there are some 8Ks now, uh, are those already future-proofed for this? Well, there's going to be, they're going to be, boxes, set-top boxes. Obviously, there's hundreds of millions of TVs without an ATSC 3 tuner in them. So we actually may even sell one ourselves, but there'll be, there'll be set-top boxes or little dongles that you'll plug into your existing TV. And then um, there will be call-outs on this, you know, the brand, the, the, it's being called Next Gen will be on the new LG and Sony TVs that are coming out this year. Um, but yeah, any t you'll just have end up with a uh, there'll be a we'll call a transition device. It'll probably be a you know seventy five or ninety nine dollar dongle, yeah. and then then you'll be able to have um, you know well if it's if you don't have a four K TV it won't show that. Right. And I do want to say that antennas will be able to receive this, but it's not up to the antenna to decide whether or not it's four K or ten eighty or four eighty. The antenna will collect whatever signal it is. The antenna itself doesn't do any of the uh, conversion right so uh, don't believe any of the snake oil where they say 4k antenna all antennas could be a 4k antenna yeah so. some exciting stuff coming for us broadcast. yeah i'm excited i think we're gonna sell more antennas and <laughs>
And I, I'm just trying to get broadcasters to tell their viewers, you know, you don't have to pay for digital TV. You, you know, you can you can get over the air digital TV for free. And Jamie, about 75% of the population still doesn't know this is even a thing. A lot of people think that they stopped broadcasting in 2009. So even if you don't buy my antenna, buy do something. <laughs> save 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 money on on your pay TV. Yeah. Yeah, exciting stuff. Uh, anything else that I did not ask you, Richard, that you wanted to mention? Well, I mean, I'm just really excited to, you know, the broadcasters, I want to thank them. They've collectively spent about $12 billion on these on their new digital upgrades. They're going to spend another billion or two to upgrade to ATSC3. Obviously, that's going to drive a lot of antenna sales. I want to, I'm really excited about that. And it's going to save a lot of people money, mm -hmm. obviously. So you're not having to pay for 500 channels that you don't watch. So, and a lot of people don't realize the picture quality when you are watching an HD channel over the air, there's less compression. So a lot of people don't realize, you know, the first, our first customers were home theater fanatics, the nuts that are spending a hundred thousand on a theater. Those were our first antenna customers because they wanted the, the less compressed. Um, and it, it, it will. And I, I challenge people to, toggle back and forth between an antenna and cable or Netflix, and you will see it pop. You'll see just the amount of detail over the air, and people are very skeptical of that. So I always challenge people, try it out. It's it's really surprising. Yeah, it is It is a very noticeable uh, factor. Uh, whenever I switch back and forth, it is noticeable, um, especially on the newer TVs. I know it's not getting 4K, but, but still, I, it, you know, you can switch channels and, and different types of services and say, Oh, yeah, this looks nicer. But it's a, to me, it's almost the same as look watching 10 years ago from standard to high definition. Yeah, it's that much of a difference when yeah. I switch over to the antenna, because of that. Yeah, no yeah the bit rate, literally, you know, to get tactical, the bit rate can be three to four times that of your traditional cable. Yeah. And if you have a large display, like one of the new 65 inch or 70 inch displays, oh. it's really noticeable. Yeah. Well, Richard, I appreciate you coming on and talking and, you know, and I think our viewers appreciate that you weren't just pushing Antennas Direct products. Uh, this was very informative and we appreciate you. Uh, yeah, you know. I, no, the rising tide is going to lift all boats, you know, so I'm really, I, I, if people can buy, everyone who buys an antenna, we figure it saves at least a thousand bucks a year, even if it's not ours. If we sell a million antennas this year, that's a billion dollars into people's pockets this year. So you know, I'm excited. I think we're doing the Lord's work. So <laughs> great, great. All right, Richard, nice to have you. All on. right, Jamie. And, uh...